guys, welcome to the fourth episode of the Denzel Financial Podcast. I'm right here with my business partners. We got on the left side our CEO and founder, Charles Denzel. How you guys doing tonight? Pleasure to have you, Charles. How has it been? It's been good. Fresh off of vacation. I look better. I feel better. Hey. Everything's good. Hey, I, I, I like the confidence, man. Definitely. And the, and the enthusiasm as well. You already know. You, man. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> and on the right side, I have over here my co-host for the podcast and our director for public relations, Rami Ibrahim. What's How's up, Rami? What's up, Anwar? I'm glad to be back here filming another episode. You know, this is always a great end to my, you know, my work week is to be able to be here and film with you, man. Well, of course, man. I appreciate that, Rami. And what are we going to talk about this today? podcast? All right. I was just going to get to that, actually. <laughs> it's going to be called Wealthy Money Habits. Nice. So today on Wealthy Money Habits, we're going to talk a little bit about tips, strategies, and mindsets that we as younger people can really start to develop in our daily routines to be able to really build that 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 budget for when we really make power moves and when we are ready to start our own business or whatever it may be. Of course, man. Of course. That's definitely right. You nailed it on that one. And so this episode will actually be divided into three sections. The first section we will we'll talk about savings. The second one will be about how to be focused on your finances. And the third one will be about discipline. And all these sections are kind of interrelated when it comes to building wealthy money habits. So we're going to start off with savings. So as you guys might already know, it's very important to have a budget. Especially when you have a job, you work fresh from college, you start working, you probably still live with, still living with your parents, you're making a lot of money. It's very important to have a budget because as we all know, it's very easy to get paid and then you're thinking about all these different things that you can spend your money on. Like you have no rent to pay, no, no bills, nothing, probably just your cell phone bill. <laughs> it's definitely easier early on, yeah. Exactly. And it's easy to say, oh, I'm going to go get these new Jordans that just came out, these new Yeezys and stuff, stuff that you don't necessarily need. So what do you guys think about, you know, having a budget and the importance of it? Well, it's definitely important, you know, to establish a budget. That's really like the framework for all your finances in your day to day. Uh, to really in order to budget, when we say budget, it's just a matter of knowing your expenses planning, taking note of what you do every day in your normal life, and then making reasonable, you know, cutbacks or setting setting minimums or maximums on what you can spend, you know? It's really about checking what you are spending and seeing where you can make adjustments. Yeah, definitely. I would definitely have to agree with uh, Rami, I have to agree with what you said. I think a big proponent as well is also having the discipline when you are spending. Uh, one rule that I definitely um, emphasize to anybody listening and even to you guys is um, the 30 day rule. If you want to purchase something uh, and you know that it's not something that you might really need or you may need, wait 30 days and then go back and see if you really need that item. If you do, then you count, you count that as a necessity. If not, then you just don't do it. It's a mental discipline. A lot of people I'm sure listening are like, well, I mean, I always make money and then it's, it's a little bit hard for me to save because I have bills and all these other things. But I think one, the mental discipline piece of it goes into something I want to explain to you guys that is called the 50-20-30 rule. Um, pretty much the 50 part is necessities like your housing and bills. The 20 is the financial goals like paying off your debt for retirement as an example. And 30 is your general income that's allocated towards your wants, like dining and your entertainment. You know, for the fellas, you want to take out a nice lady, you can use that. You know, for the ladies, you know, you want to get that nice bag, that's what you kind of use that for. Um, but for me, me personally, I would say another key component I want to bring you in here, Rami, with this, and also you, Anwar, is basically, what do you believe in terms of right now in the age that we're in, there's a lot of shit going on. You know, the government shut down. Oh. You know, a lot of a lot of things happening with, with China, with the trade war, stuff going on. You know, it's, it's good to be cognizant around you. So one thing I would say to you guys is, 
what can somebody listening to this podcast or even ourselves do in terms of investment pieces that can kind of have money put to the side that takes away from just the nine to five job that we do daily? So to answer your question, Charles, there's definitely different um, ways and methods that your money could be making you more money or just simple ways that you could be accruing more money. Uh, once you have your budget established and you know your 50, 20, 30 allocations, uh, you could start to then choose what to do with those 20 and that 30%. As you know, only 50% of your money is allocated to, to spending now. The rest, you got to start tucking some away into different plans such as your 401k plan or potentially a savings account or many different methods. Personally, I find for people our age, it is very important that you start building towards your emergency fund, which would be your savings account. Um, very important. And setting up automatic withdrawals from your paycheck. That is one of the most important things I can say to somebody that is allocating every paycheck. You set it up automatically so that if you need $100 every month for your transportation, it's taken from your check right away and then you don't have to stress about that money lost. And that really, really goes a long way when it comes to planning. So you want to set that money aside for your transport, set that money aside for your 401k every month. And then before you know it, your, your backup plans and your contingency plans, you're not even seeing them, but they're slowly accruing so much value as well as interest on your savings accounts. Of course, Rami, my guys are already dropping germs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you already know it's the team. But um, yeah, pretty much you guys nailed it. And one more thing I will add is that you got to be realistic about fixing your budget depending on your income. And most of the time when you're, when you're setting a budget, you got to be able to identify what's my needs and what are my wants. And you gotta be able to separate them and focus on your needs. Because it's easy for you to spend money on a lot of things that you don't necessarily need, but you might want them. So just focus on the needs first and then get the ones. And also make sure that you're actually anticipating to spend more money than you think you will spend because most of the time mm -hmm. you end up spending more money than you actually think you would. So let's make sure that we're doing that whenever we're, we're budgeting. It's, a mental, it's really a mental game out here because you're always surrounded by these ads and these commercials trying to sell you things or get you to sign up for more things and you just end up, throughout the day you get kind of like, hmm, maybe I will spend money on this meal plan or maybe I will spend money on this, uh, on this item that I don't need. And that's really it. Like It's a, it's a mental game. It's establishing your needs and your wants and you can't, I can't stress that enough. Definitely, man. So... Um... What do you guys think about negotiating your bills with different companies? I'll start with you, Charles. Like when you're dealing, for example, let's say uh, your, your phone carrier is AT&T and you realize that your monthly bill just went up. How would you approach that to kind of bring it down a little bit? Just usage, you know, in terms of how you utilize your, um, basically your calls. Sometimes, you know, in terms of also, one thing I'll definitely stress too, as well as for people that work, also look for company discounts on your phone bills. Mm -hmm. That's that's one thing I stress to everybody is discounts. Anything that can make your life easier in terms of how expensive something is, definitely take advantage. Always do your research. Don't always buy you know the most expensive thing. If it's something that you can kind of just buy that's a little bit cheaper, but it's in, within your means, that's kind of what Anwar stress. You definitely want to go with that. You know, you buy, you want to buy something because of the value it brings to you. Exactly. When you think of the future while buying something, you have to think of it, am I going to need this thing often? Is the quality going to last me that long? Those are two, those are great things. You know, I'm, I'm kind of going off of what you wrote here, Anwar, but you know, it's something that I love and I, I feel like the audience should definitely want to you know, sure. learn from, you know, kind of just hear and want to learn from it. So. And every purchase, you should kind of view it like an investment. Correct. And that yeah. is something that I think we should really implement. If you view something, everything that you buy as an investment, whether it's food or clothing or, or a house or a car, you got to really consider, is this going to benefit me in some way? Is it unnecessarily spent? And you'll really see, that's how you really determine value. How long will you use it? How useful will it be? And will it add anything to you? 
And something that is super useful that not a lot of people utilize is to go online and do some quick research on whatever item or product you wanna buy. Consumer Reports website has comparisons of different products in that kind of realm or in the same industry and it'll really give you the plus in the mind. It's like a, a pros and cons list and you can really make an educated choice whether it is you're buying your dinner for the night or you're planning what house to buy for you and your, your wife, you know? Yeah, that's, that's facts. I mean, honestly, I think of it like you gotta, you gotta treat your money, and I'm speaking to the audience here, you gotta treat your money basically like, like for fellas, I say like the girl you've been trying to bag that's so bad for the longest. <laughs> and for the ladies, is the guy that you going to the club trying to get his attention so bad you come and looking that good. So it's like, you gotta have dates with your money. And that's either weekly or monthly. You know, <laughs> it's the truth. Cause yeah. honestly, you know, when you have those money dates, as I call it, it keeps track of how you're spending, where your money is going to. We, a lot of times we fall victim to not knowing where we spend our money because we're swiping that debit credit card consistently. We're taking money out. Even us going to work, going to school, you know, people listening, you know, we got college followers, college students. You know, we understand, you know, you got the, the you got you gotta go to class, you wanna get some Starbucks, you wanna go get food, that's money you spending right there. Before you know it, you call mom and dad for money, we don't really have to. You know, it's it's like you track your money, you track your spending. You could tell yourself, let me just cook something. You learn to cook. You know, just learn something where you don't have to exceed more money than what's required of you. Because it, like like Anwar said, you know, we live in, we're living in a time right now where you really have to be cognizant of how you're spending. Or before you know it, you will literally be broke. You'll get <laughs> caught up have, so yeah, quick. And get caught up, exactly. exactly. You won't know what to do with yourself. So. That's why it's important to have a budget, guys. You can, even with a budget, a simple budget, you set aside enough money to spend on your impulses. And that's a big thing today as well, impulse buying. Like he said, you go out on your way to class, or on your way to work, you might make two purchases already to start your day with a coffee or a breakfast sandwich. But if you really exactly. plan for the week or plan for the month, I'm gonna only buy out two times a week max, you really start to develop a structure and a discipline in your mind that'll help you build really good wealthy money habits. Another thing I wanna um, kind of talk about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna segue into that also is when you are spending, also understanding to stay below or literally at 30% with your credit card spending. A lot of times, of we, I know a lot of people, and I've fallen victim to that early on, is when you're consistently swiping and thinking, oh, I'll just pay this, I'll just pay the minimum, the minimum when that payment. balance comes. <laughs> that interest incurs. Credit That's why when you see, when you see that, that $105 payment, you pay that off at 105 and it literally comes back and it's around 95 as opposed to being at 45. That's the little interest that they added on there. Yep. You know, one thing I wanna I wanna I wanna break down what credit card debt is mm -hmm. first for our audience. And I'm gonna use the, the definition for you guys. I took this from dictionary.com. <laughs> Let's go. It's unsecured <laughs> consumer debt, access through credit cards. Debt results when a, when a client of a credit card company, a client would be somebody that gets a credit card, purchases an item or service through the card system. Example, I go to the movies and I swipe my card. That late payment penalty, oh shit, I forgot to pay that penalty, <laughs> itself increases the amount of debt that you owe. So when you swipe it, and let's say I went to the movies and it came out to 30 and I missed my payment, it becomes $65. So one thing also is pay early and pay more than what the minimum amount is. If it's $50 payment, you pay $100. You Because the thing you focus on with credit cards is the debt incurred through the interest. Interest is a killer. And I'm gonna speak a little bit more also. I want Romney coming here with me. Is What do you think also in terms of um, having good credit? Yeah, that's. I'm glad you brought me in here because I was really itching to get this in, guys. Credit is, as much as Charles mentioned, it's it's a great tool to have, but it's also you have to live within your means and be reasonable because a, the the difference between a credit and a debit card, for those that don't know, is debit is you're spending with money that you already have, 
with a balance in the bank or whatever it may be, credit, it's money that you don't have. You're spending now and have to pay it back later and that's where the credit, that interest comes in. It's ne you're never paying back just what you spent, you're paying more. So you really gotta limit that credit card debt that's unnecessary. Use your debit or cash as much as possible for little transactions. You wanna build the best credit score that you can while we're young because credit is so valuable when you are getting a mortgage for a home or to lease a property or to get a brand new car. Your credit score says a lot about you and it starts from when we're young. So you really build good habits by what Charles said. Make a little more than the minimum payments. Pay it off as early and as quickly as you can. You don't wanna go into your 30s and 40s with a lot of debt. That'll really cripple you in the long run. That's cruel, man. And thank you guys for mentioning credit cards. It's really important that people actually know about this, especially when you're going into your freshman or sophomore year of college and you're just getting your credit card that your mom gave you. Make sure that you're actually Going on, on going on the internet and learning about how to pay off your credit card because I've fallen victim to this myself. When I was getting my credit card, like my mom only told me, oh, at the end of the month, you just pay $35 and it's all good. And that's because our parents themselves, they work so much that they, they didn't get the chance to really learn about credit. I so, mean, yeah, basically like and, and what Anwar is saying, you know, in terms of first off parents, not really understanding in terms of credit, in terms of investments that you made, you know, or make, excuse me, and also just having an overall understanding. I didn't learn none of this shit in school. Exactly. Fuck with you guys. They don't teach you this stuff. They don't teach you this in school. The value of credit. We learn this through life. Exactly. <laughs> now, what I want to say though is that I didn't learn how to properly use my credit card until I actually took a class Ooh. during my. I would say my second to last semester of college, it was actually called personal finance. And mm -hmm. that class is so valuable, but it's like, it's not even a general education class. Like, no. It's an optional class. I feel like those type of classes should be required because yeah. that, that, that class actually taught me how to properly use my credit card. The fact that you should actually pay off every single amount of money that you use within one month. So it's very important that you guys are actually doing the research, pay off everything you've used during that month. Don't just stick to the minimum payments. And as Jay-Z said, what's better than throwing money at the strip club? Credit. <laughs> Did he say that? Very important. Is that actually what he said? <laughs> yeah, in his song. He said it, right? Yeah, he said that. And just to touch on that, I just want to say, guys, that we have so much more knowledge. I always, I feel like I always look back into this in, in our topics, but we have so much more knowledge and access to knowledge today than we did 30 years ago. So we can take advantage of things that our parents couldn't. Our parents might have told you, oh, you just got to pay $30 on your credit, and they don't tell you the real details of it. We can do that research in an hour and, and come out so much wiser for it and really start to build wealth habits while we're young now. We don't gotta wait till we're 30, till we're in $10,000 debt to learn what debt means to us, exactly. you know? And you know, one another thing is self-education. I prefer self-education, meaning the stuff that you read, the individuals you speak to. Uh, for me, for me even, you know, I, I also, you guys know well that I also work, you know, in the business world, so I see it daily. The people that make the smart investments versus the ones that wouldn't. You know, and you know, like you said, not everybody's a bank and not everybody's gonna understand that. You can't go t talk to your parents. So you know who you talk to? You talk to the books that you read and the internet that you go on. One thing I wanna preference, I never knew none of this stuff till I started reading the book that he's pulling up right now, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yep. And that, I'm gonna just give a quick summary of that is basically this guy called Robert Kiyosaki, the writer basically growing up in Hawaii had a dad, his actual dad, who was the poor dad, versus his best friend's dad, who was the rich dad. The rich dad literally taught this guy and educated him through real life experience by making him work by the time he was like 12, 13 years old, not giving him five cents, literally, for a week worth of pay and understanding how to multiply his money by having the mental discipline. So when all his friends were partying or you know hanging out, wanting to go do whatever they're doing, he was like, nah, this is what you have to do to set yourself up for the future. Whilst the poor dad 
had great education. And that's another thing, though, you also should have. Because one thing they can never take away from you, and I do say this, is your degree. Because at the end of the day, if you do go to school, is one thing that you do learn, and that's books, is reading, having a great education. Because I think having a great education sets you up for working your nine to five job. When you work a nine to five job, you allocate that money into those investments from the rich dad side. But I spoke too much. I don't want to go too much <laughs> into it because I want you guys to read this book yourselves. Exactly. You guys, definitely a book that I recommend, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. You know, it's a great book. Just teaching you about what we're basically talking about is savings, investments. Investments is key in this day and age that we're in. It's so easy too because yep. it's not like our parents ever. They didn't have the technology. They didn't have the resources that we have. So guys, definitely take advantage of it. It's something that I definitely stress to everyone. I myself, these guys right here attest to it. They see it. They're experiencing it by running this business, this podcast that we're on. We're just giving you the blueprint because we learned the blueprint and we're still learning. But we want to give you guys that are listening and watching right now to understand that. This is what you have to do because if you believe you just go home from your nine to five job and then you go straight home and from work and then you're telling yourself, I'm gonna be rich that way, that's never gonna happen. That is not the case. I'm just I'm being honest. And I'm not saying everybody has to have a business. No, no, you don't. Because at the end of the day, everybody's different. Everybody's their own man and or woman. But one thing you have to do is do something different than what everybody else is doing. That's one thing I'll say. Of course, Charles, def definitely great points over there. And since we're still on the topic of discipline, I just want to point out the fact that, you know, if if you're married or maybe you have a fiance, make sure that both of you guys hold each other accountable when it comes to your money habits. Because you might be you might be great at budgeting, saving, investing, but if your partner is not that great and they're just spending any money that comes their way. That's going to cause a lot of problems. Now, I'm not going to get too much into it, but you guys basically got the point. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to just say this part. I'm going to say this point, and I don't want nobody to tag me for this. But one thing I would definitely say is, and I would say for guys, I, I'm not, you know, I can't speak for the ladies. Well, eventually, we'll get a woman in here, so we'll get a woman's perspective. But for right now, of course. I'm speaking for a man. As a man, when you're dating a woman and a wife, you look for someone that literally it builds you up. And when I say builds you up, it's not that we're literally going out every night to party. Of course, you go, you have your fun here and there. But what you have to understand is the person that you're with only can help you get better by having the mental discipline that you want to stress to yourself. Because the only way that works is if, as a man, you have the strong woman behind you to help you and help build you and help grow you. You can't do it yourself. As Anwar attested to, you know, marriage is, I'm not married, but you know, I have a girl, so <laughs> I'll definitely say like, you know, having that right woman behind you is definitely this a good component to have. So major key, that, man. Yeah. Major I thought key. that. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. But it's very true. You want to surround yourself with people that, that share those core values, you know, in terms of financial, emotional, whatever it may be, but financially, which is the topic of today, if you guys aren't on the same wavelength, you, you're going to run into financial problems down the road, you know? That's what Charles is really getting at there. Of course. Now, guys, I wanted to speak a little bit on the fact that you've got to be focused, especially when you're first starting out to, to budget your money, investing, saving, because it's, it's easy at the beginning to remember everything, but then as time is going on and you're caught up in all the daily all the daily activities, work, coming back home if you have a side business, everything. It's easy to, to forget some of the key components. So one thing that I want to bring up that's related to focus is the fact that, for example, don't let your emotions actually dictate you to spend money on something. That's actually called emotional spending. So actually control your emotions while you're spending money. It's good to have emotions, but don't let it lead you to spending money just because, for example, you're at the store and you're seeing this big screen TV and you're thinking about your friend Bob who has it and you're like, oh yeah, I was, I was at Bob's house the other day. It was really cool. We were watching the football game there. 
you have your own TV in your house, but you remember that it was a great time, so now you want to buy that big screen TV that you don't actually need. You don't need it, you know, so definitely avoid emotional spending. What do you guys have to say, to say on that? Yeah, emotional spending is a key, key component and basically um, other literally being dead broke <laughs> or you have some money to yourself. You know, it's, it's the emotional piece is the discipline behind it, kind of what we emphasized to you guys early on in this podcast. So one thing I'll, the one thing I'll say to that, just to add on to what um, he was saying is basically also, don't be influenced by what you see um, through the social media realm that we're in. A lot of people see people project these fantasies of themselves and think that they can match it by going above and beyond what their limitations are or what their spending needs are. So for one thing, I'll definitely say to that, guys, is please don't, don't look at anyone but yourself. You look at yourself in the mirror every day. That's the only person that you need. That's the only person that you should impress. You shouldn't be impressing. Even if it's, like I keep saying it, and I'm gonna keep saying it because this is the era we're in. Fellas, stop impressing for the ladies. The lady, if you, have, if you got the right word, you can have it. You don't need to spend all this money on this clothing that you can't afford right now. Just put that money that you can spend on that Gucci belt, whatever you wanna get, and just put it to a business. Put it to, to, to a stock. If you don't know how to do it, just read and ask the people that have been there and the people that are trying to give you these gems. One thing I was read, I was watching um something about um I, you guys are gonna laugh. I was watching uh that was a Soldier Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching when um you know he was on um with I guess the guy's name is it was an Academics. Yeah, yeah. he looks yeah, like he looks like a Pokemon character or something like that. Yeah, so he was he was talking about um, him and his people were talking about basically making fun of Soldier Boy, and because of the fact of he had a game console that literally looked like a Switch. But the crazy part was Soldier Boy is making good points. He was basically saying like, end of the day, you see Asians help other Asians, you see Jewish help other Jewish people. He's like, you guys are here basically making fun of me, and he's like, I made basically I'm get the exact I'm not gonna say the exact number, but I know it was millions. And he even showed to the people that were interviewing him, basically saying like, this is the money that I'm making on a weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. And he has multiple business. And one of the girls was like, why do you have multiple businesses? Right there, that's crazy to me. Because she's more concerned of the fact of, the fact of his antics or whatever she sees on social media about him, more so than the jewels that he's dropping. And that's one thing that I see daily, you know, again, you go on these shade rooms, you see all this stuff. It's fun media, but the thing is like, you wanna listen to what is being preached because if people are giving you the blueprint, why not take it? Rami, what do you think? I agree, man. There's plenty of people that are trying to give us the tools to succeed and, and we're just focusing on the wrong things. And I don't want, that's why we're here really trying to extract whatever nuggets we can give you guys. But it, ultimately it's up to each and every one of you guys to do what's right for you and not for other people and try to just flaunt, you know? Live with live within your means and you will establish some really good wealthy money habits and we hope so. <laughs> exactly. And you know, one another point I want to say is, you know, setting up if if you if you have a hard time, let's say you have a hard time saving. We all fall victim to it. Again, you, you tell yourself, you open up the account and say, oh, I'm going to save this and that. Then you see this trip to Jamaica for 500. You're like, all right, and, you know, the next paycheck, I'll, I'll, I'll save. And then another one comes, then you, you see this nice outfit you want. So if you don't have it, then this is what you should do. You basically set up automatic withdrawals to save and invest. There's apps. Um, I, my, I myself, I use Acorn. That's, that's one. Um, you know, there's different um, funders club, there's different type of investment platform apps that you can use where those guys are the guys that are the money managers. They know how to invest and they put a restriction on your account and you where you can't take out that money that you withdraw. So that's a way to discipline yourself. So one thing I'll stress audience is if you don't know how to save, you don't know how to invest, then talk to the right individuals, do your research first, because not all of them are the right individuals to work with, but the right ones that you're able to work with, they'll do the work for you. Yeah, very important points that you guys brought up. 
So there's one last point that I actually wanted to bring up. And let's not forget, it's great to do all these things, but don't forget that you're gonna retire at one point, you're not gonna be working anymore. And you do want the money that you invested to keep working for you, although you're not working. So you gotta have money work for you. You don't work for money at the end of the day. That should be your ultimate goal. So it's important to save for retirement. What do you guys have to say about that? Definitely, there's different type of um, platforms, even within your job with the 401s, um, IRAs, investments. There's nothing wrong right now if you're in your 20s, anybody listening, 20s, 30s, and you take out about, let's say, you take out 10 to 20% of your, your nine to five income and basically put it into those accounts. Because at the end of the day, that's something that what Anwar was kind of saying is what sets you up for the future. So as opposed to you work until 70, you can retire at 60. You make good money. Let's say the average income you make, let's say is 45,000 to about 60. We'll give you the range. Let's say you do that for, you take out like 10% of that. You can literally have close to 100K, 80 to 100K range by the time you hit your 60s. Guys, I stress that to you. Please do your research and again, talk to the right individuals. I keep saying it because we're going to have this podcast and then two weeks later, somebody will listen to it and not listen, like not do the right things that we're basically preaching. So if you don't know what you're doing, just talk to the right people that know what they're doing and it's okay. Um, you know, one thing, like I said, even us, our business basically deals with that. That's Danza Financial Group LLC on Instagram, by the way. Exactly, yeah. That's our financial group on Instagram. And basically, we're going to talk about a little bit about what we do for, for those that are kind of confused about our services. Yeah, exactly. What we basically do is we're a venture capital, and I'm not going to say venture capital, we're investing, also consulting, and what we're doing right now is educating you guys in about financial practices. That's what our business basically details. We have this podcast to speak to you guys. Where we're not able to speak to you through our social media, you're hearing our voice, you see our faces, for guy, you guys watching on YouTube, guys and girls, excuse me. And also we have our market news, Danzo Financial News, that gives you day-to-day -day news information. And the news information, I know you, we got the New York Times, Bloomberg, CNN, all those news platforms. But what makes us different is you see our age range. You see what we're doing right now. Every anybody can do what we do, but the reason that we're going that the rate we're going right now is because of our hard work and consistency and trust. That's one thing that you guys definitely have to have. And like I said, if you don't feel like you have the right individual to speak to, I myself, when I started this business, I didn't really know the right people to to kind of work with. But what I did was I taught myself by literally reading and educating myself and I help build that. So what I do for you guys and what we all do is we basically want to help you guys grow your businesses, grow your money from your work and or whatever job that you do, even scammers, we help you work with <laughs> You want you want to scam and make your money, we don't we're not gonna we're not gonna ask what you do. We're just gonna say how you can invest it. Yes. So and but I'm not all right guys, but I'm not gonna say you guys should scam. So I'm listening to those city girls and all those people. Don't scam, all right? It's not good. But Rami, I want I want you to kind of speak from um, your position as well and or what you guys do as well. So they have a little bit yeah. of an idea of you, what you guys do. Yeah, of course. So I'm pretty much the chief marketing officer for Denzel Financial News, as I said earlier. So I handle everything marketing related. If you're seeing the daily posts on Instagram. That's usually me or Charles from once in a while. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're basically, as he said, trying to educate people for the most part and also motivate people that want to be entrepreneurs because we know it's hard to be an entrepreneur. What you go through every day is easy for you to feel down. So we're trying to keep that constant education and motivation going. That's the sole reason of creating this podcast. We're also trying to provide people with some information. That's why we have that little financial news. And also, we're also trying to help people that want to become business owners by, for example, let's say you want to start a business, you don't know what your logo should look like, you can come to us, we can talk to you, depending on your, the mission statement for your business, the vision statement, whatever, we can 
our designers can make a great logo that can come alive for you. We make websites as well. So we provide a variety of services. But I would say the key aspect of starting this business, as Charles mentioned, is the fact that we're investors. So if we see a great business idea from someone, especially millennials, and we really believe in it, we're going to put down some money in your business. And me, uh, I work in the public relations aspect of the business and I try to look for outreach and networking events that, you know, we could really, as we mentioned, our purpose is to help others and to, to really provide fuel for others to add to their business or to their ideas. So I help with that. Um, I, if you would like to ever be interested in finding out more about the team or becoming a part of the team, you know, you could always speak to me and I could provide you with more information and, and you'll find us at plenty of networking events this year in 2019 and hopefully later in the year we'll even host a few events and they're all going to be centered around knowledge and just uplifting people in our community, in our age range that are trying to better themselves. Correct. You know? Yeah, Absolutely. So, yeah, basically, um, like, but the, the key component, and I love that I was able to come, I know you guys haven't heard me in a little bit on this podcast, but these guys have definitely been killing it. I know you guys have been listening. You know, please, anybody that's listening, tell your friends, tell your family about us, Dental Financial Podcast. Um, we're also on Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube. But what we're preaching is what this title is, as what Anwar first listed is Building Wealthy Money Habits. That's what our main goal is of this company, of this platform that we're using to speak to you guys and just helping you grow, helping you understand in terms of for the financial world how to be better. Because you, you won't have people speak to you in this way in terms of how we're doing it because we're just like you. We all work, but we all also come and we love building and creating in Danzo Financial Group. We all have nine to fives like you guys. We all basically speak to you guys on the regular through Instagram with this camera, myself, Rami, uh, Daniel, I know he's in school, but he's probably gonna be listening when this drops. <laughs> so definitely, you know, we're all here for you guys. We're building our team. We wanna work with anyone that's interested working with us. If you have a business, you want to grow it any way in terms of through just a logo, website design, just understand how to incorporate your business, reach out to us. Um, you know, we're definitely here to assist you guys. You know, these guys are great. You know, they make my job easier. And I love working Thank with you. them. You know, I'm gonna stop gassing them now, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely right. Teamwork make the dream work. Anyone listening? 2019 is your year, man. Exactly. Don't back down, don't doubt yourself. 2019 is fully yours. You gotta be in full effect. All right, guys, so I know last episode we mentioned the fact that we would have an episode about business branding, inviting one entrepreneur. We're gonna have that very soon. We did not forget about that, guys. So anyone out there with a business that's interested in having a right logo design for a business, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And also, we're coming to an end for this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the fourth episode, Wealthy Money Habits. Make sure you guys go out there and practice what you learned in this episode because it's very important to, to neglect things that you learn on a daily basis. So make sure you guys take notes, write it down or whatever. And as I said, the next episode will be about business branding. So make sure you guys tune in. SoundCloud, Spotify and YouTube, those are our main platforms to watch this episode. We're on episode four right now, talking to you guys, so please check out the previous episodes and any upcoming episodes. Any questions, don't hesitate to reach us out at Danzo Financial Group. That's Danzo, D-A-N-S-O, Financial Group at gmail.com. Thank you. Have a great one, guys.